Today, property duo Manuel and Linda are helping lovebirds Deirdre Sears and Andy Pike from Hemel Hempstead. What a beautiful day in paradise, eh? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> They're on the hunt for the first ever property that they'll be buying together. Dee used to go to the same youth club as I went to, and uh, I, think, I think she actually fancied me then, to be fair. <laughs> And then we bumped into each other about four, four and a half years ago. And since then, I just feel like I've known, have known them all my life, but there's been a 40-year absence. <laughs> After four decades apart, Andy and Deirdre are eager to make up for lost time with a new life in Spain. One of the main reasons for coming down here purely is the weather. You actually feel better in the sun. I think when you actually got a bit of a suntan, you actually feel healthier. It's just... It's just a better lifestyle. Yeah. yeah, and the people are friendly. The Spanish are pretty much friendly. You don't see many grizzly ones, I'd admit, would you? So, roll on Spain, really. With eight kids between them, their families are a big part of their wish list. We're probably looking um, to a maximum, and it'd have to be a maximum of 100,000. Somewhere that's got some sort of view, not be too overcrowded and enclosed. So hopefully have a nice solarium, on top, where we can have a barbecue, a room enough to have for our families and enjoy it. Communal pool. Air conditioning. That is one big old wish list. We're just trying to get as much as we can for our buck, really. So these are the properties I've got for you both. OK. So we'll show you those and yeah. see what we go. Let's rock and roll, eh? Lovely. As they set off, Linda and Manuel check if there's any wriggle room in that long list. So it's three bedrooms, what are you looking for? Minimum is two, but anything better, better than that, obviously, is a bonus. Yeah. It's the budget, really, that's restricting us. Property one is a southwest-facing bungalow in the exclusive residential area of Benimar Rojales, located seven kilometres inland from the beach. Built on one floor, there's an open-plan kitchen and spacious lounge diner. There are three bedrooms, two twins for guests, plus a master. A rooftop solarium was on Deirdre's wish list, so that's that box ticked. And in addition, there's a side and front patio and a communal pool, all for 114,950 euros. 14,950 euros over their 100,000 euro budget. Well, this is nice, isn't it? It's all, um... The grass painted. is in good order. <laughs> yeah, it is nice. <laughs> the garden's a big hit, and the artificial grass is so good, it's even got Andy fooled. It's the outside tap, water the grass. The gardener shouldn't be saying that, but that does look lovely. Oh, it's quite big. Oh, this is lovely. Yeah. Hmm. I'm glad it's got air conditioning. Air conditioning. Hard oh, cold. yeah? Yeah, hard and cool. And it's a thumbs up from both Andy and Deirdre for the kitchen size. Although there's confusion over one particular feature. What is it? Though? Is it just the shelf? Just it's it's a, bit, a little bit low for me. A bit low, yeah. I think just the design. Just yeah. Yeah. Are they saying? Yeah. No one's quite sure what it is, but Linda has a suggestion. <laughs> you could stand there, bean meal, Scotty. Yeah. <laughs> Best not just stay on that side. <laughs> It's not the kitchen's best selling point, but luckily Deirdre has been distracted by the vista. As I noticed on some of the details, the kitchen sink is sort of against the wall with no view. Yeah, so you've got... But at least you've got... You can work, you know, you can work there and look around. That's nice. So far, so good. On to those bedrooms. So whether you're having eight children between you, this is with the single beds, I would say it's ideal. It is. Because they can come and uh, swap and change or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. That's lovely. Again. Oh, it's lovely. OK. We're going to see we'll now show the you the uh, master bed. The master. Where's the bed, please? Yeah. The action room. <laughs> no more kids, thanks. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's nice, 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 nice. Gorgeous. Look at all the wardrobes. Yeah. That's your stuff all sorted, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I can tell that they like this house. It's nice and big, it's bright, it's well kept. Um, so for the first house, yes, everything seems to be ticking the boxes at this moment in time. So we'll just carry on and see how we go. OK. 
Okay, so we got here the bathroom. A bath would be preferred. I like to have a nice soak. So the lack of a bath could be a problem for Andy, but ever the professionals, Manuel and Linda move them swiftly onwards and upwards. <laughs> oh, this is lovely. That is beautiful, and now you'll see. Now you cut the view. This is lovely. lovely. I love this. Yeah. It's elegant and pretty. Well, you got the views to the mountains. Mm. This That's is lovely. Nice. This is really lovely. You can see the Somerset every Sunset. evening from downstairs mm -hmm. or from here. They go down through these mountains. How many boxes you can take from this house? I would say an eight. It's a really, really nice. And I love this area. This yeah. is lovely. I this love is this is this is what made it yeah. an eight. This yeah. is okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's nice, okay. really nice. Well, you could even put a hot tub up here. You could. Or you some could. sort of thing. You could have you your could. bath up here. Yeah. You could. Yeah. Okay. I think this is very nice. It's clean, bright, feels solid, and the fittings look good quality. It's quiet. It's got all the things we want, except for the bathroom. Yeah, definitely an eight. Mm, it's but, lovely. Um, I think it's really nice. If it was nearer the sea, it'd probably be a ten, okay. wouldn't it? So. Yeah. And Manuel has one more bonus up his sleeve that could just swing a sail. Okay, the lovely, lovely yeah. pool. Yeah. So it's lovely. Big size, lovely. isn't it? Very yeah. nice. This could solve the problem of not being near the sea with mm. the pool. Mm. Okay. So Property One ticks lots of Andrew and Deirdre's boxes, but it's a bit pricey. Luckily, there's still two houses to come. Set in a hilltop location, this four-bedroom villa has breathtaking views of the Cabrera Mountains and the surrounding valleys. But it's not just a case of location, location, location. Inside this property, there is space, space, space. From the roomy kitchen with a solid granite worktop and comfy dining area, to the vast open-plan living area with floor-to-ceiling windows. Upstairs in the master bedroom, the glass-fronted design is echoed, giving more incredible views. It also has an ensuite bathroom with a high-end finish. Outside, a lagoon-style pool with tropical planting and feature waterfall really make a splash. Hi, Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Oh, the owners are expat entrepreneurs and partners, Tracy and Linda. What we'll do if we have a guided tour, okay. and then I'll make notes as we go through, and if there's anything special in any particular room, mm -hmm. underfloor heating, anything specific, just let me know, okay. and obviously I'll make all those oh, yeah, notes. Oh, no problem. So this is our kitchen. Right, OK. Linda and Tracy are hoping to sell up and relocate to France. Part of the reason we, we want to downsize is that we are both in different directions most of the time. Relocating to, to France um, obviously leaves like, um, you know, those, those sad thoughts that, you know, we're going to be leaving the home that we've created over the last, you know, 12 years and we're obviously going to miss all our friends and, and you know, that, that's the hard part about it. It's no surprise that leaving their four-bedroom villa won't be easy as it was purpose-built to Linda's specifications 12 years ago. And the couple are hoping that Steve's valuation will be breaking the million euro mark. It's time for, you know, us guys to kind of move on and get on with our lives. These columns, are these a, your design feature or are these the, the structural No, 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 columns? it's our design feature. Wow. And that's, obviously that view, the view is, is... The view is, yeah, is, the view is the main That's, yeah. that's, the, that's yeah. the reason why, obviously, we, we did the windows like they, like they are. Can we have a look? Can yeah. we have a look? Yeah, go for it. The balcony overlooks the five and a half acres of land that comes with the villa, including a paddock and stables big enough for three horses. These are your stables? Yeah, there are stables. Yeah. Um, our land is all fenced and all nice and safe if people do have horses. It's all of these details that Steve needs to take into account for the best valuation. Luckily, he's come armed with the best tool in the business. And the good thing is, that's the view. That's never going to change. No. No, not Sharon. Just his clipboard. And what's the total plot size? Um, 2.2 hectares. 2.2 2 hectares. All right. Yeah, yeah. We've got wraparound terrace. Did you get that, Steve? <laughs> right. Tell me about the pool area, because obviously it looks uh, well, there's a, there's a big special pool. again. Um, there's a jacuzzi, it's a beachfront entrance, yeah. and it, we've kind of designed it so it's like a lagoon type. 
Now it's Steve's job to work out how much the villa should be marketed for. Well, I always expected it to be a really special property. I think it's absolutely what I was hoping it would be. I think, I think the good thing is I'm quite excited because it's, it's so different, so unique. The huge, unique villa may seem a large space for just Tracy and Linda, but they don't live here alone. Well, we have a few little furry friends. How many furry friends? Uh, well, we've got 11 upstairs. 13, 13 two dogs. Oh, we've got, oh, 11 yeah. cats. 11 cats and two 11 dogs. 11 cats and two dogs. Yeah. And those are just their own pets. Downstairs, there's a few more furry friends. In the business, Tracy runs from the basement. And this is the cattery. Oh, oh my life. <laughs> oh, good grief. <laughs> Yes, it's a cat hotel with 13 individually themed suites for the perfect cat holiday. The Love Shack, Jungle Room and the Solar System Suite, to name but a few. It's not your average cattery. Our cattery is the four seasons of cat hotels. Yeah, it sure They is. have TV, they have internet access, they have basically whatever they want. They have rooms down there that are bigger than most apartment bedrooms. <laughs> Who came up with that concept? That is it was brilliant. actually it was Tracy's idea. Oh, she came up with the concept. It was just a big empty space, and yeah. um, we were contemplating taking what in um, lodgers. But then we thought, you know what? Really we love animals. Yeah. Having had a good nose around the villa and the boutique cattery, it's up to Steve to come up with what he thinks it's worth on the market. But will it be the price tag that Linda and Tracy were hoping for? From a real estate point of view, I was a bit concerned and cautious about having a business in a Did property you think it was of this. Devalue? But yeah, I think yeah. it's uh, it's not just a large villa. Yeah. It's not just a business. Mm -hmm. It's a whole package, isn't it? it is, that yeah. we need to sort of try and put together for yeah. them. So I think we will it's have to work be on it. It's not an easy sale. But I think that unusual sell... We can turn that into a positive. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Turn it into a positive. Yeah. Over in Alicante, later in life lovebirds Andy and Deirdre are looking for a sunshine retreat for a budget of €100,000. They loved the first property, but it had one drawback. It's got all the things we want, except for the bathroom. So Manuel and Linda are taking the couple to a second property that is twice the size and will give them more bang for their buck. Property number two is a furnished townhouse, also in Benamar. The first floor has a large living and dining area, spacious kitchen, shower room and the first of three double bedrooms. A stylish spiral staircase leads down to two more double bedrooms. Another shower room, again with no bath, garage and room for separate storage. It's on budget for just under a hundred thousand euros. So here we go, kids. Fantastico. This is quite dark in this. I was going to say it's dark, yes. Dark. This first impression is quite dark. Dark room, yeah. Even though this property has plenty of space, it's not size that's at the top of Deirdre's agenda. I don't like that feeling of it's almost having blinkers on. Yeah. Now, if I was washing up and doing things here, it's not as to see as well. The kitchen with its lack of views gets the thumbs down, so Manuel tries to turn the tide with a look downstairs. I think the downstairs is very nice. I think it's fantastic. Well, this is a lovely room. Yeah. Um, Big storage. Yeah. But again, the windows, high windows. No, no view. No view. No yeah. air. You can't open, you know, without climbing, climbing on your head to open the window. <laughs> it's, it's yeah. nice as the size of the room is. The bed's even lovely. The bed's well. lovely. Furniture's yeah, lovely. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a no to me. It's just too dark. Well, we can pretty much draw a line under this one and say yeah. this is not for us. Yeah. Yeah. Even at twice the size, and 15,000 euros cheaper than property one. And he's written off Casas Manuel's second potential property. Downstairs was obviously very sort of dark area. And having the two bedrooms down there as well, you know, and I don't want to sort of get up in the morning and not be able to see out of a window. No. Or worse no. still, get look out the window and see a brick wall. With the house hunt going downhill, 
Linda has a brainwave. Sell the lifestyle as well as the property. In my opinion, Benimore's perfect. All the lovely uh, restaurants, you've got Village Life, I've got the expat communities. And we need to give them the full 360 degree tour. Linda's left the finer details of the tour to Manuel. Hey, look at that, hey? Eh? And he's chosen a novel alternative to the company car, a pedal-powered bar on wheels. Oh, yeah, look at that. We want the old clients to get it, the full package. So we thought, and still to do it by car, we went to the, by a, a big bike. Joining them on the big cell of the area are Linda and Manuel's daughter, Sophie, and husband, Damon. I'm speechless. <laughs> For the first time in this holiday, I'm speechless. Now we can be recycling too. <laughs> Sophie's hoping they can all dig deep and release their inner Bradley Wiggins and has come armed with her own version of the yellow jersey. Oh, the yellow jersey must be <laughs> So, Manuel, it's not going to be the Tour de France, it's the Tour, of, no, tour, no, of, no, no. tour de Casada. I'm excited. Can I be at the front, the leader? Oh, I've just got an engine. <laughs> <laughs> no, Andy, no engine. It's all pedal power. Ready to go, guys. Ready OK, to what do we do? With no fear of setting a new world land speed record, they're off. So this, this is the high street. Sorry. But they're barely 200 yards down the high street before they've backed the traffic up. And their transport isn't sounding too healthy. So Manuel directs them off the busy high street. No, I think that's what it is. It's just, just, just loose. I think it's well, loose. Yeah. But on the steeper back street, the bike isn't behaving. I'm absolutely exhausted. This was the worst so, idea yeah, we'd had like ever had. And now we're stranded in the middle of Casada. <laughs> These poor clients have come to buy a house. I <laughs> made a mistake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to run a professional establishment, but my dad just keeps destroying it. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think of the tour, guys? <laughs> you enjoying it? It's yeah. fantastic. Yes. It's only a short tour. We saw a bit of the high street, guys, yeah? With the bike unable to handle the steep side street... Come on, we're going to show we can do it. And no support team on this Tour de Alicante. One, you you two, two three. three. Here go. Go, 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 go. The decision is made to cut the trip short and turn back. And with a bit of heavy legwork... Come on, baby, come on. Oh, oh. They make it back in one piece. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, never to be forgotten. Never to be repeated. <laughs> never forget Cats and Manuel. All uh -huh. Well, if that's what you've got to go through to seal a deal, then... <laughs> so be it. That's it, but not again. <laughs> Linda and Damon are worried the disastrous tour will cost them a sale. So what do you think of that, mate? I thought it was off. You know what we can do to, uh, to recover this? We'll, we'll take the clients for a quick drink now, yeah? yeah nice meal. Treat them to a meal, yeah? Treat them to a meal. We can't, we can't leave them to go, to go like this. They'll, they'll be going to Alicante Airport. We've got to try and recover this, oh, yeah? Oh, OK. High five. Bring your bag. Oh, yeah, I can't bend my knees. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, kid. Well, I think this deserves a big cheers and well done, yeah. Dee right. and Andy. Hi. Well done. Hi. Hi. Crisis averted, hopefully. And there's always the final property tomorrow. The mistake is, Manuel, you should have made sure it was an electric motor, not a proper pedaling one. And Manuel, you're lucky you're in one piece. <laughs> yeah. In El Maria, Sharon and Steve are valuing a unique hilltop mansion. We've got a wraparound terrace, ensuite bathroom, a jacuzzi. They've just discovered the built in business that comes with the house. A five-star cat hotel. Oh, my life. <laughs> oh, good grief. The owners, Linda and Tracy, are relocating to France and are hoping to sell their home for a price somewhere over the million euro mark. It's not your average cattery. Our cattery is the four seasons of cat hotels. Yeah. 
After having a good look around, Steve has done his sums. And now it's the moment of truth. Now, uh, I've, I've made the calculations and I'd love to tell you that it was worth far more, and it really is. However, uh, I think the ceiling and the top, top end is going to be 900 and 85,000 euros. Now, of course, that's open to a little bit of flexibility. Steve's valued the property at 985,000 euros, so not quite in the million euro bracket. I would obviously like to get a little bit more, mm. but at the end of the day, I appreciate, you know, the current climate. Um, I think that, you know, we've got to be realistic. We'd, we'd rather just, you know, yeah. get rid of the property. I guess because they've owned the property for so long and there's been such a fall in the market, mm. we're going to also have to manage the expectations. I think it's just a realistic price and I yeah. think we've got to live in a realistic world. Um, and that, that is the value. Linda and Tracy are going with Steve's valuation of €985,000 and they're hoping for a quick sale. So Sharon will have to pull out all the stops with a killer marketing strategy. This needs to be marketed completely different to probably 99% of the properties that we have on our books anyway. Mm -hmm. She's brought along some glossy magazines aimed at clients of a certain calibre. I call it the calibre. Stephen calls it the calibre. No, Sharon, that's calibre. This one hits um, a lifestyle which I think probably would be more suitable for this sort of property. Mm -hmm. This goes into places like the House of Commons. And... Mm -hmm. Well, the demographics on that particular magazine are pretty high. But are millionaire members of Parliament going to want a luxury villa with stables and a built-in cattery. So we need to find a millionaire mm. who wants to open a cat sanctuary, possibly a donkey rescue. Yeah, and, and to be perfectly honest, I don't think we're going to find that in Mohaka. I think we're going to have to spread our nets wide to get that. If they're going to catch the big fish they need in their net, they're going to have to splash some cash. The first dent in Sharon's marketing budget is some glossy aerial photography taken by son-in-law Matt. And she's been dying to get her hands on his equipment. Come on, look at it. Come on. Give me a go. It's not happening. It's got to be easy. No. It's only two oh, buttons. Just because I can do it doesn't mean it's easy. It's, well, if you can do it, it's, it's only two buttons. It's two buttons, it's two knobs. It's two knobs. Oh, oh, don't even go down there. <laughs> For the Garners, selling the property is all about getting to know it before you can get the marketing right. And for Sharon, that means test driving one of the villa's best features. <gasps> oh, that's lovely. What well, do you want me to be in the drone shot? Uh, I can pose. You, you, you know. Go on then. You're the boss. <laughs> Managing to avoid the additional unique feature of his mother in law in the swimming pool, Matt gets some impressive aerial photographs of the villa. Oh, my life. Well. <laughs> Now it's just down to Sharon to get serious about finding a buyer, so Linda and Tracy can begin their new life in France. Well, now we can start badgering the French estate agent with the yes. final details of what we want and over there. Now the houses are actually being marketed. Mm -hmm. I think um, it's priced really fairly, so hopefully we'll be able to move on really quickly. It'll be interesting to see what interest we get by the end of the week. Yeah, I'll be all over it. I know you will, poor Sharon. <laughs> In Alicante, Linda and husband Manuel are trying to find couple Andy and Deirdre their first house together for €100,000. Oh, this is lovely. Yeah. The first property they saw, a bungalow with a large rooftop solarium, was a big hit. I love this. Yes. It's elegance. But property two was a miss, as it didn't have the views for Andy. I don't want to sort of get up in the morning, look out the window and see a brick wall. Having gone up a gear to sell the Spanish dream, Linda and Manuel now have one more house to show them. Situated in the seaside resort of Playa Flamenca, property three is nearer to the beach than the first two properties and is a mere stroll away from restaurants, bars and shops. With tiled flooring throughout, the living space combines both lounge and dining area with an adjoining galley kitchen. The family bathroom serves two good-sized guest bedrooms. And upstairs, the spacious master bedroom has a separate bathroom, with that all-important bath for Andy. 
There's plenty of outside space, including a sun terrace and a side garden with a feature barbecue. It could be Deirdre and Andy's for 104,800 euros, so slightly over the 100,000 euro budget. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. OK. The main reason that we've picked this out for you has a small outside garden yep. and it's walking distance to the beach. It's quite compact, isn't it? But then I suppose this is more like a holiday. It's more of a holiday. Uh, it's like what you'd rent. That's right. Thank you. So you have your kitchen here, so it's fully equipped, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. But there's no, really, no windows of you. So far, so lukewarm. Here we go into the bedroom, which is a good size again. Oh, yeah. It's a good size room. There's not really a room for a dressing table or anything, so make it more homely. And the views... There's no views, this game. Time to pull out the ace card for Battle of Randy. Now, Andy, look what I've got yeah, yeah, yeah. for you yeah, here. Yeah. A lovely bath. A bath's always yeah, much, much nice. more. Yeah. I like it. You're, you're like me. I like a bath. That's not a bad size bathroom. No. And it's light. It's light and you've got everything. Now, look what I have for you here. Ooh, well, this is the um, master bedroom. Yeah, so you could have your dressing table here, madame. Yes. This has got a view, but it's not particularly nice. But there is blue sky. The bedroom leads out onto a private sun terrace. You can look out, but it's quite private. Yeah. You've got a little bit And of... you could do this gorgeous with all your pots and plants. Yeah. You could have some uh, fruit pot trees up here as well. Yeah, you could have them potted, couldn't you? Yeah. That's not a nice, nice size. Yeah. yeah. Tour over. So what's the verdict on this beachside property? This one's, what, 100 and... This one's 104. Four. So that that's, that still makes it a difficult decision makes because obviously the sea is important. But yeah, but I've... then this has only got the sea. <laughs> that's yeah, the yeah, only you're thing it's right. got. With the viewings over, Andy and Deirdre have some serious thinking to do and arrange to meet Manuel later at the office. In Almeria, Sharon's been very busy transforming the empty office space next door. What do you think? Yeah, it's looking yeah. good, isn't it? Yeah. She's recruited technically savvy son-in-law, Matt, to help with her grand plans. I'm going to use this room as a virtual reality room. A virtual reality room? A virtual reality room. Using the very latest technology... I can't see anything. <laughs> She's created a high-tech viewing room where clients will be taken on virtual tours of the company's properties. Oh, my... Is it good? I'm immersed in... Oh, Do you want to buy that house? Oh, yeah. After photographing over 250 properties... And... Actually... <laughs> these are turned into videos and uploaded to their website. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Right, come With on. a virtual reality room ready, it's time to test the technology. Matt? Yeah? You got a minute? I've got a really lovely lady coming into the office called Noella, and she would really like to take a look at the virtual tour on the goggles um, in the hub. So I've picked a few really nice properties I'd like her to see. So. Are you OK for setting everything up for her? Leave it with me. Much as gracias. De nada. We are the first people in this area, first agents to do this. Um, and, you know, I'm hoping it's going to be good for the vendors as well. The owners of the properties will see that we're thinking out of the box and we're coming up with new and exciting ways of promoting their property. They pay our wages at the end of the day, so it's up to us to, to use the technology that's, that's you know, now at, um, now at our fingertips. So, fingers crossed, it'll work. As well as potentially giving clients a unique experience, Sharon's hoping that virtual property tours will save time and money by reducing the amount of trips they have to make of up to an hour into the countryside to view properties in person. With the first client in tow, they're ready to cross into the virtual world. This client being, being the first client that's going into the hub, I'm actually quite nervous about, to be honest. I never thought I would be. And we're going to make her feel as comfortable as possible. Hopefully she'll enjoy it. 
So welcome to our hub. Noella Keane has been viewing apartments with Spanish Property Choice for the last few months and is the perfect test pilot for Sharon and Matt. I've never even used 3D glasses. So really? Yeah, this is going to be an experience. Yeah, I think it's quite simple. So, you just pop them With the goggles all working... Pop them on. Noella is set to be transported to a virtual reality. Oh, wow! And if you move your head round... Oh, my goodness! <laughs> for Noella, the effect is miraculous. <laughs> and you can oh spin round on the chair. <laughs> Oh, look, oh, my, I feel like I'm going to fall off. <laughs> no, 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 you're perfectly safe. Look sound. at that view. <laughs> 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 <gasps> <gasps> Where am I now? <laughs> Boys, what's that? So what did you think about that? Unbelievable. Yeah. That is oh, absolutely... Oh, yeah, you're in that. Yeah. Amazing. Right absolutely then. amazing. It seems like the result Matt and Sharon were hoping for. Without any doubt, you know, the, the sensation of actually being in the apartment and seeing everything so close up, you know, you're, you're probably seeing in greater depth. Yeah. I think it's an amazing idea. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. I think both of us have been quite nervous about it, haven't we? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Worried whether it's going to yeah. work or not. It's so unbelievably realistic. It's genuinely as if you're in the room. I think seeing the first person in the hub and the reactions was pretty amazing, really. I think it was brilliant. <gasps> Where am I now? It was more than we could have expected, but it makes all the work worthwhile, so really happy with that. She loved it. Thank you for so, being uh, our number one. No, yeah, that's thank it. Thank you for letting me be your number one. <laughs> <laughs> but I am actually proud of the old son-in-law because, you know, at the end of the day, without him, I wouldn't have been able to move forward with this. This is only because my mother-in-law is such a wonderful person that I've come to this stage in the business. In Almeria, Sharon and Steve recently took on a prestigious property with a price tag nearing the million euro mark. These columns, are these are your design feature or are these the, the structural? No, 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 columns? it's not a design feature. Wow. Although it's an impressive hilltop villa, the specialist business in the basement, a cat hotel, has got Steve worried about finding the right buyer. To be perfectly honest, I don't think we're going to find that in Mohaka. I think we're going to have to spread our nets wide. Even though they're two months in, the agents haven't had a single viewing. So I've taken a full page um, in the Good Property Guide in, mm. the, in the UK for yeah. the Cattery. That's the first one to come out. I've got four other magazines that are due to come out in the next editions. I think it's no great surprise to us that there's been no viewings at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I think trying to sell not just a very expensive property, but also a business that runs alongside it. It's a challenge. Um, that is very much a speciality, isn't it? That's yeah. a very much a one-off. And four months in, the situation hasn't improved. And the Garners are worried that owners Tracy and Linda might be getting a bit jittery over the lack of progress. Because Linda and Tracy are putting a lot of trust in us, um, we want to keep them informed about what we're doing. Mm. We're a little apprehensive about seeing Linda mostly because I mean, she mm. likes things done and she likes yeah. it done now. But she needs to understand that we're not talking about a, you know, a, a, yeah. a normal sale. Yeah. We're talking about a million euros. Yeah. To avert a catastrophe at the Cattery, Sharon and Steve head up to the villa. I mean, the good thing is it's gained, the property's gained a lot of hits on the website. Mm. So its click-through rate at the moment is really good on all the portals. Yeah. But that's not transpiring into uh, actual, people. actual viewings. Bums you know, on seats. Bums on seats. Worried that the lack of viewings might lose them their client and a big commission, Sharon wants to make sure they're still on board. I bought, obviously, I bought quite a, a selection of magazines that um, that I've managed to get you into. I managed to get you full pages about the property oh, here. Wow. So yeah, yeah, that looks great. Um, that looks really good. Yeah. As well as the usual print marketing, Sharon's got contacts at several international trade shows. There's one in Shanghai. 
um, which Ooh. is the end of this month. Yeah. And we've also got the UK uh, shows going on at the moment as okay, well. Amazing. I'm also in touch with a, a large broker in London yeah. okay. uh, who has high-end clients. We haven't sort of gone Forgotten away and, you, yeah. and thought, oh, OK, it's just going to be a lovely, beautiful property to put on the books. We're spending a lot of money as well. You know, it okay. costs us a lot of money to put in these magazines, you know, so... That's fair enough. And yeah. we, are, we are doing our very best to try and get it moved on That's for you. Enough, yeah. Mm -hmm. The right person will come along and if we keep the property at the right price, I'm sure we'll find a, a buyer. Yeah, the right price being the asking price. <laughs> <laughs> so despite the lack of solid interest in the villa and the cat hotel, Tracy and Linda have been reassured that their house is in good hands. I definitely feel a lot better. Yeah. When you see it in, you know, like see colour. print. Yeah, it looks yeah. really, really good. So mm -hmm. hopefully they'll be able to find a buyer with some money. Yes. And that can possibly take on the cattery as well. Yes. So everybody's happy. My honest opinion on whether we'll ever get a buyer for this property, absolutely, yes, we will get a buyer for this property because if we can't find a buyer with what we do, mm. then nobody no else one will. Can. But with years of experience in the business, Sharon and Steve know that this sale will take some time. Although she said there's no movement in price. Well... <sighs> Uh, at that, that sort of price, there has to be. Yeah, there there's got to be, be some realistic, you know, mm. we've got to come down to earth a little bit here and realise there will be offers on that property. Back in Alicante, Manuel is meeting up with Andy and Deirdre to find out the verdict on the three properties he showed them. Property number one was an open plan bungalow priced at just under €115,000. The second property was a spacious townhouse on for just under Andrea and Deirdre's €100,000 budget. Property number three was by the beach and on the market for just under €105,000. So have they made a decision? We still prefer the first property we saw. Um, well, I think what we'll do is we'll put an offer in of €100,000, but that is lock, stock and barrel. Um, okay. And I think um, it's pretty much a take it or leave it deal because we're working to a, t a tight budget. So if obviously if you can work your magic, it'd be great. Not to worry, and we'll try our best for you. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah, super. By tomorrow, we'll give you the answer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We look forward to it. Fantastic. A hundred thousand euros is fifteen thousand less than the asking oh, price. Thank you. So the couple now have a tense wait while they leave Manuel to do the negotiations. Manuel, cousin Manuel, how are you? OK? Mm. 48 hours later, Andy and Deirdre hear back from Manuel. Their offer's been rejected. So, on the way to the airport to catch their flight home, they up their offer by seven and a half thousand euros. And they've just received some news. The guy took a, a bit of time considering it. Um, he thought it wasn't enough. He came back with a, a counter offer, um, which was a little bit too high for us, so we threw another one in. Basically, it's accepted it, um, which is great. So, it's under offer. We've just got to arrange a transfer of funds when we get back home to the UK. And basically, we've bought a house in Spain, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. For 107,500 euros, Andy and Deirdre are the proud owners of their first home together. A beautiful three bedroom bungalow with a spacious rooftop solarium and those all important views. It's a good foundation for the rest of our lives. That's how we feel. Mm. We can't wait to get home and tell the children and tell the grandchildren, and it's just so exciting. So, fingers crossed, it'll all go through. Yeah.